Welcome everybody to Building Bridges, Discovering Your Path to Peace. Today is our very first episode and I am completely privileged, honored, and pleased to have my very dear friend, Dr. Christine Sauer, as my first guest. Hey, thank you, Maxine. It's such a pleasure to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you. And we are recording in Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Oops, right up there, Christine. Beautiful ah. place, although we have snow right now. A lot of snow we had and cold. The coldest day was yesterday or the day before, Saturday maybe, right? I'm grateful for snow. It brings us water. I'm grateful for the cold. It kills all those nasty bugs that I don't want to see in the summer. Yeah. That's why we don't have snakes and crocodiles. Good point. I never thought it that way. Ah, <laughs> and those big biting spiders. Oh, well, you know what? We had those in, in Bali and India. Yo, plus snakes, etc. I'm not a big fan of them. And oh. It definitely impacts my inner peace. Well, there we are. Well, that's what we're talking about today. Peace. Peace in the world. Peace in the country. Peace in our community. And peace within ourselves. Mm. And um, for those of you who don't know, Christine is from Germany. How could you guess with that accent? Right? I have no idea. People still think <laughs> I'm from <laughs> Holland. <laughs> Wie geht's Ihnen? Gets in and yeah. oh, oh, <laughs> oh, don't push me any further though. <laughs> uh, anyway, welcome, Liebling. Yeah. 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 And um, uh, Christine and I had been having a discussion about, well, uh, about peace, peace in post war Germany and, uh, and all of the uh, misconceptions that have existed for many, many years since then, that the world is totally, I believe, uninformed or misinformed, mm. or misinformed regarding the German people and, and their lifestyle. So, uh, Christine, I wanted you to discuss about what it was like for your parents who were truly post-war Germans, and then when you came along, how it still impacted in 1961 when you were born. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 1961 was the year the wall was built. And the Berlin the Wall. The Berlin Wall. Yeah. Not just Berlin, but all through Eastern Germany, which then was uh, uh, the Russian zone, uh, to the other two, three zones. And, and, and I want to ask you, were, were you from Eastern, or are you from Eastern no, Germany? No, I'm from Western Germany. Okay. I was one of the fortunate ones born in Western Germany. My parents also lived in Western Germany, although my grandmother is from Meissen, which was then Eastern Germany. Right. And now we are all united again. I but see. what people don't know is that my mother, she was, she's born in 1930. So she was nine years old when the war came okay. along yeah. and war is really the ultimate outward uh, thing of not peace mm, the it's opposite, really the, the opposite antithesis antithesis. Of i like that word yes. it's beautiful yes. you say it nicely <laughs> thanks <laughs> and war is the opposite of peace because there is no peace no peace outwardly and it's my mother told me she lived in Berlin. Berlin was heavily bombed by the Allies mm -hmm. uh, starting in the 40s. So every time there was an alarm, and there were many, they went in the basement of their home and had to wait for the bombs to fall. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they could hear the bombs approaching, this whirring sound, and then the impact. And the house was spared, but the neighbors weren't. And, mm -hmm. uh, we look at picture of Haiti nowadays on TV uh, after uh, the earthquake and post-war Germany looked pretty much like it. Mm -hmm. There was not much left. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 the, 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 the targeted bombing that they have now, which is still bombing of people, 
uh, wasn't available then. So mm -hmm. the, the bombers just it's dropped the bombs. Mm -hmm. It was as widespread yeah. as possible. And the children were, I think in 1940-some, uh, removed to the countryside where the impact, where the chance of getting impacted by bombing was low. Yeah. I see. So they were separated from the parents and put in camps in the countryside. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Wow. And so without their family, without the surroundings, mm -hmm. they were encamped. They were in camps and wow. children. And at that point, they, I think they weren't too, too many, much mourning. And I must say, during the Hitler era, when my mother grew up and my father was born in 25, so when the war broke out, he was 14 and too young to serve. Mm -hmm. At 16, he was drafted. And he was uh, deemed to be a good candidate for a bomber pilot. So he was trained to be a pilot. And he was very fortunate because the moment uh, that he was supposed to go to the front of the war yeah. in Russia, he got diphtheria and had to stay home. Oh, really? And it took him, I think, three months to get over it. Wow. And after that, something else happened and then the war was over. I see, I see. But my grandfather, who obviously was an adult when the war started, right. and he and his seven brothers all had to serve Hitler, whether they wanted or not. Most of them didn't want it. Is but, that right? So they didn't really want to. There was a, there was a resistance yes. within the people to Hitler. Yes. But of course they had to they be scared because yeah. they knew that anybody who resisted would be uh, uh, lined up by the SS and put in a concentration camp, German or not. And, and, and were Germans, some of them put into Absolutely. a concentration camp. People who didn't like Hitler, yeah, yeah. dissidents, yes. uh, pastors that uh, were continuing to preach against him, yeah. gypsies, they all landed in concentration camps, mm -hmm. which was an awful place. But as a German, at least if I believe my mother, she was told by the parents, oh, the Jews are going to a labor camp that they will be uh, learning how to uh, garden and uh, dig soil and plant uh, carrots and potatoes. And Jews worldwide at this era, they're not really liked well mm -hmm. because they, I, I'm not sure why exactly. Really, there's no reason for it. There's good Jews, bad Jews, good Christians, bad Christians. Absolutely. But at that point, there was a lot of racism against Jews. Yeah, of And Hitler he must used have, that. He used, he used that to that. his advantage to get he the control that. of and the And there people. was a science. The fear. And there was also a science that is now mostly forgotten that was called phrenology. Yes. where they analyze the skull mm -hmm. to uh, get uh, hints for your character. Now, mm -hmm. later we realized it doesn't make any sense, but so Hitler uh, justified his hate of the Jews by their skull characters, the shape of their nose, and uh, they, they were ugly caricature, which overdid it. And so the, the people were... Uh, basically told what to think. And Christine, she, forgive me, but doesn't this sound vaguely or completely familiar when we think about the brown menace today? Absolutely. absolutely. Scary stuff. Absolutely. And there's even politicians that use propaganda to their benefit. Of course. I won't name any names. Mm -hmm. uh, but absolutely. Sorry, go ahead. Propaganda then was new. TV was new. Yeah. There was really no uh, real TV. It was all the movies. So people went once a week to the Wochenschau. And in school, we watched them where they got pictures of the war and what was going on in very rosy terms. A German victory was celebrated. Yeah. Uh, German loss was not even mentioned. So that's propaganda. And then Goebbels, sure. Hitler's uh, right hand, mm -hmm. he was an excellent speaker. Mm -hmm. And Hitler himself, when you look at him, he's he, quite an orator. Yeah, and, yes. and, and, and the, 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 the funny thing is, he himself was dark-haired, 
and dark skinned really. Yes. And he said the typical German is an Ary Aryan sure. with blonde Fair. hair, blue mm -hmm. eyes. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't himself an Aryan at all. But he thought he was a leader and he actually was elected by the people in 1932 in a free election. Mm -hmm. And then a few years later, he declared exceptional status and made himself a dictator. And at first people liked it because he promised them work yeah. and he promised them uh, food and he delivered on both. They had work because they were building the autobahns and they were building, <laughs> finally, they were building weapons, weaponry again, which Germany after the loss, the first world war, which was very traumatic because yeah. the first world war was before the movie area mm -hmm. and people mm -hmm. didn't know what war was. Sure. They were excited sure. going to war. Sure. And then they got the reality of the chemical warfare in the Normandy. Yeah. I have been there, I have seen the long lineup of graves. What a terrible slaughter field that was mm. on both sides. Yeah. And yes, Germany lost the war, but Germans suffered just as much, if not more, than the others. And yes, the Russians suffered a total loss lot mm -hmm. because in war, war brings out there the worst no in winners. people. There, there are, are no, no winners. winners war. No. war brings out the worst in people. Yes. And what many people also don't know is that was Hitler was the first to have rockets in Wenemünde. Really? Otto von Braun, Werner von Braun, so, yes. was a German and he made rockets for Hitler. And he used the rockets to shoot them towards England. And then Werner von Braun managed to go to the States and develop the atomic bomb. So had Hitler not thrown him out, basically, because he was a Jew, yes. Hitler had the atom bomb. It was close. <sighs> and, and amazing. The it? fate, how fate works, is amazing. Yeah. I'm glad, obviously, that Hitler lost, because he had not, nothing good at heart. Mm -hmm. But war was awful. And my mother told me when the war ended in 1945, war was not over for the Germans. She was in Berlin. When the Russians came and marched into Berlin, it was not freedom. It was torture because they went through every house and uh, ate all the food, destroyed what they could, and raped the women really? because they were mad at what the German soldiers had done in Russia. They had sure. done the same. Sure. But that was, was after the retaliation. Yes. That was after the war. And I remember my mother telling me how she and her twin sister, both 15 pretty young women, yes. they're hiding between a big cupboard and a secret compartment in the basement for three days while the Russians were in the house, oh raping her mother, uh, oh. beating her father, but gratefully not finding the girls. Wow. So they got spared. Incredible. And then post-war in Berlin, there was the Berlin blockage where the Russians tried to get West Berlin into the Russian zone. And the Americans recognized what was going on. And that really began the rehabilitation of Germany because they said, oh my God, Russia is really trying to antagonize us. At that point, Russia was an aggressive force. Yeah. And they tried to get as much of Germany as they could. So that's why... I don't know which president did the Luftbrücke, the, the airplanes that delivered packages to West Berlin so they had to eat because they were hungry. They ate spinach made out of stinging nettle. Mm. They went into the potato fields after they were harvested and seen if there's a potato or two left that they could eat. They were hungry. They had nothing to eat. The only nutrition came from the parcels from the Americans. Is that right? Wow. So to, to this, this day... And just after the war? That was after the war. Mm -hmm. From 45 to so 47. that would have been FDR, probably. That was FDR. Probably, yeah. That, yeah. 
yeah. you know your your history better. It's a, it's the same in Europe. We learn U.S. history mm -hmm. and Canadian history, but not as detailed as oh, no, of course we do not. here. I, I know. And on the other hand, I, I in, in in Canada, I think we have one year of European history in school. Mm -hmm. That's what my son had here in Halifax, mm -hmm. and you don't learn much in that. And I think in America they have none. <laughs> they don't know even that Europe exists sometimes. Yeah. But uh, and I remember, so my, my mother could sing all the Hitler songs. She liked the melodies. And I asked her, because I heard the, the lyrics, and I said to her, that's really good lyrics. And she said, well, as a nine-year-old, I just didn't sing the, think, the melody, you yeah, just sing, it's just right? a melody. I didn't so, think about the, the lyrics. I didn't think about wow. it. Wow. Yeah, so, and, and sing, my father- Sing one, sing one, go ahead. But die Fahne hoch, die Reihen festgeschlossen, es sah marschiert in ruhig festem Tritt. You can see how a child would go along with that. Yes. What does it mean? What's a marching ring? That means uh, raise the flag and close the rows uh, because the SA, the, the, the special army of Hitler, yeah. it's yeah. marching with calm and steady tread. I see. So you can see the soldiers yeah. marching. Yeah. And of course, the it kids the were marching. Step, the, big, the goose step, yeah? Yeah. Ah. So that's where it started. And then it started the, the, that they were killing the, the Russians. I see. I see. Yeah. Wow. They had wow. words for that. Uh, so so you, you were born in 1961, which was the year the Berlin Wall went up, yes. right? I don't remember it myself, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> You've I've seen, seen it, on, but, not, but not so much. I've yeah. seen it on TV, but that was the era of the Cold War. Yeah, yeah. And as children, when we went to school, we learned German history. We mm -hmm. learned about Hitler. Yeah. We watched videos yeah. of the concentration camps, what they did to those poor Jews, and how they looked when they came out. We saw so they, those they were skeletons showing this in school. Was in it? school, about in grade seven, eight, nine, and we were told as Germans, it's our fault oh, that wow. the Jews had to suffer so bad. Wow! So it's a collective German fault, and of course Germany had to pay reparations. I think they still pay reparations. I don't know, but, but here you are, Canadian, a I don't child know. in school. A child and you're feeling all of this guilt that you did this to this people. Yes. And what terrible mind-washing garbage is this? Uh, we also, here in Canada, you hear, oh, Canada quite often. I see. The German national anthem at my growing up time was sung only at the Olympic Games when Germany won a gold medal. I see. Maybe at midnight when the TV program shut off, uh -huh. but I wasn't up then. Yeah, yeah. But the only time I really heard it was at the Olympic Games. I see. I think we learned it in school, but we never sang it. And and here in school, mm -hmm. they sing it sometimes every day. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because sometimes. we are proud of Canada. We were mm -hmm. ashamed to be That's Germans. Mm -hmm. And many of Germans are still ashamed, but the, the nationalism is coming back, whether that's a good thing or not. <sighs> to why, why, do you, it is. why do you think that is? Is it and now because of the, the people were so repressed and made to feel guilty for so long that it's just a natural reaction to that? The, the pendulum swinging the other way, you think? I think so that the children that like my children, they are now in their 30s. I say, what do I have to do with that? Uh -huh. And the people that lived during the Hitler area are often dead. I mean, my mother is still alive. God love her. She'll be 90. She remembers a lot. Yes. But even she was a child during the Hitler area. Yeah, right, right. Uh, the adults during the Hitler area are gone. And Germany lost a lot of people. My grandfather's family my grandfather came back seven of his brothers died in war mm -hmm. so of eight children seven passed away mm -hmm. and I know that in the US and Canada 
we really had never bombs flying over us. Mm -hmm. And no. we never had to duck in the basement and darken the windows mm -hmm. because the bombers are coming here. So we really don't know how it is. And I don't yeah. think it, we really had to hunger. Had to what? To, to go hungry uh -huh. without food. Well, you know what? Where they did? In Britain. In Britain. In Britain they did. My yeah, mother yeah. was from British. Yes. And, and she told me that you were going was into the, the down into the air shelters. She was just a young woman, 21 at that time. Yeah. And uh, she said that's where she learned how to smoke. Yeah. How to, and that's what killed her ultimately, by the way. But the bombs, yeah. she, she lived in the Isle of Wight. Yeah. And uh, so when the German Luft, Luftwaffe, Luftwaffe. Luftwaffe were, were flying back to Germany, the excess bombs they had, they the drop on the Isle of Wight, Isle of Wight on, your mother. You know, on their way home. Yeah. So it was pretty horrific times. And of course, they had food rationing and everything. Yeah. So, but but mm -hmm. then the, the Allies were allowed to feel proud of going to war and defending the faith and, and defending right and all of that, where it wasn't like that for the Germans. No. And yet, you know, there were a lot of good German people who were manipulated by this madman. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And I tend to believe my mother that even her parents didn't really know what happened to the Jews mm -hmm. because it was a well-kept secret. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I know that the Allies knew in 1943 exactly what happened in the concentration camps. Sure. And some people say they could have done something earlier. I don't know. Well, I don't you know, know. shoulda, coulda, woulda. It wasn't it, right it, regardless. It was um, never right. And no. those people in Russia, they are the German soldiers. And it's horrifying. Put a whole village in a church, including women and children, and burned it up alive. Mm -hmm. I mean, that mm -hmm. is horrific. And they burned the fields so they didn't have anything to eat. The Russians suffered heavy in the war through yeah. German hand. Yeah. Because I, I, I know that some people that had to be soldiers, mm -hmm. that really didn't want to be soldiers. Of course not. It still brought the worst out in them. Because yeah. they were expected to be mean. Yes. They were expected to be brutal. And, and it was also, it was survival, wasn't it? It was survival. Because if they didn't do it, it was going to be done to them. Yeah, and there were Not very an few, very few people that dared to hide a Jew. Mm -hmm. Because if you were found out, you were killed. Yeah. You were put against the wall and shot. That was their favorite method of killing people. Yeah. Put 20 people in a row against the wall and then have a shooting commando of 22 or so guns. And every gun except for one had a bullet in it. Mm -hmm. So the oh, shooting oh commandos could always say to themselves, I didn't do I it. I didn't do it. Yeah. They weren't sure. Was it Who, them which or the others? Which killed that person? Mm -hmm. wow. They killed those children and yeah. women in concentration camps that were killed that way when the guards were out. Oh my. Oh it my. was terrible. And then I, later, when I was about 14, 15, I read books about, because of course I was wanting to be a doctor, I read books about what experiments they did with those concentration camp prisoners, medical experiments. Yeah. And I'm still getting goosebumps. So Mengele Menga, was there. Mengele was so one of them. Yes. Yeah. But there were others. And what they did yeah. to those poor people, mm -hmm. I can't imagine. Were those human beings? Mm -hmm. How would their inside look? I think that went far beyond what fear would make a person do. Far beyond it's psychotic. It. I don't know, it was a, a sadist. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's some kind of a disorder. It's not, not an excuse. It's a miserable person that yeah. would expose people naked to the cold until they pass away or put them in a cold bath until they pass away, measure all their light functions and temperature. They still use those data today Do they really? for people, how people survive the cold. Wow. And there were much more wow. brutal, brutal experiments than that. So then, in 1989, mm -hmm. when Ronald Reagan came into presidency, then in the I US, already was 28, and I remember today we lived in Braunschweig, which is about two hours from the border mm -hmm. to Eastern Germany, mm -hmm. and two hours to Berlin. Mm -hmm. 
about three hours. You have to go through a little bit of the DDR. Yeah. And we watched it on TV live, the demonstrations that yeah. were not shot. Yeah. Because before people that tried to get across the wall, they shot. Yeah. And finally they were in shot and then the people became bolder. And you could see them just pushing the guards I away. I that video or the video. Or I, I or saw it live on TV. Yeah, the yeah. guards pushed the people, uh, uh, the people yeah. pushed the guards away and just went across. And then they opened it and they came through with their little cars, their trabbies, yeah. Habant. Yeah. A miserable car, worst ever. But it cost a whole year's salary over there. Yeah. It was a very expensive wow. car. So they came and about two, three hours later, they arrived in Braunschweig. Wow. And we saw it on local TV. We lived about half hour from Braunschweig on the country. I see. We saw how they all came and went to the grocery stores and wow. raided them. Wow. For weeks we couldn't buy because we decided, the West Germans decided as soon as the war was open, that we would take their money one to one. Yeah. Really it was a, because Reagan said, I remember no, no, this. In the, in the good, in the yeah, yeah. What he said was, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. And that was the, the demise of the Berlin yes, Wall. At that that time, was the beginning. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I still see the people climbing on the wall and celebrating Amazing. and then starting to tear it down with jackhammers and hammers yeah. and chisels. And, but yeah. the Travis came for weeks. To, to West Germany, especially where we were closest. And we took, as uh, West Germany took Eastern German money in one to one, and the real relationship was more 20 to one or so. I see. But we said we accepted, so they could buy. But and they bought bananas, yeah. they bought chocolate, they bought beer. Those were foods they couldn't properly get in I the see. Eastern part. I they see. were not starving. They got cabbage and onions. Sure, but and it was all, all Russian food. No, no, it wasn't no, even Russian. No, but we there was just certain food they couldn't get. There oh, was I no see, import. They didn't oh. have any. Ah, they any were isolated cash. from the outside world. Yeah, they had what <coughs> go locally. They had potatoes, cabbage, onions, carrots, and stuff like that. Right, so right, wheat, right. bread. There was. They were not starving, but they didn't mm -hmm. have those extras. And their chocolate sure. tasted like cardboard. Oh, I was told. Oh, well, you know, interestingly enough, so 1989, the mm. Berlin Wall comes down. The physical wall came down. Yes. The psychological and emotional wall, I think, still exists even up to today. Does well, it? Yeah, it, it, it was in the beginning. It was a general welcome. We yeah. all cried and hugged sure. and went together. Sure. And then the German, uh, the West German government realized, oh my God, it cost us a lot of money. So they had to put up a separate tax, which they called solidarization, solidarity tax. I see. So that's, uh, solidarity is positive. Tax is seen by most people as something they don't like. <laughs> right. So I still pay the solidarity tax in Germany. You do? I still do. And, and uh, was that to help bring, supposedly bring the country together, is it? Like that? It was to help bring the country together and help uh, as East Germany rebuild. To support them. Because East Germany didn't look like East Berlin. Uh -huh. East Germany in the rural parts looked like the last, uh, t uh, the last um, uh, tanker just rolled out. Really? I've, oh I've been there right oh after the wall opened. We went into the rural parts. They had cobblestone streets. Right. The houses were old. And in, in Europe, they have mostly brick houses. So right. they last for hundreds of years. And that's how old they were. The stores looked like in the 30s. And I see. it was generally dilapidated. Uh -huh. Piles of rubbish of stones that nobody cleared away. It mm. was depressing. Mm -hmm. So that was all fixed with the solidarity tax. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting because you know what? I, 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 I think I'm correct in saying that most people don't know or realize these events that took mm -hmm. place and how it has extended even up into the modern day to, no. to this day and lays the seeds for... Uh, uh, people to feel uncomfortable, uneasy, um, uh, you know, guilty, etc. All those negative feelings 
Christine. It makes it harder to love each other and yes. to find inner peace. So here's here's my question. Go for it. In your humble opinion, and it's not always humble, I know. <laughs> I try to be. I, I know, sweetie. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, in your opinion, what can be done in this world to bring that inner peace? Now, I know with your medical practice, you'll go into all of that regarding health issues. Mm. But certainly, peace is a health issue. Peace, inner peace is a big health issue. Yeah. If you don't have inner peace, they call it anxiety. Now, yeah. they like to put what they call mental health, it's just mm -hmm. a label, in, in a drawer, in drawers like anxiety, PTSD, yeah. or whatever. And those are all labels, but yeah. they all have root causes. Yeah. And I feel a big part of it is regaining your inner peace. Yeah. And the way people can do it is one, connect with, what's above us and I always compared with the cell phone that's my final mm -hmm. thing yeah. the, the 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 hardware the cell phone itself the battery is a, is a body the battery has to be charged it can't be empty or you can't watch your Netflix movie right. on your right. cell phone right. but that's not enough even if the battery is charged you have to have a system a, 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 a software system Android or iOS or you can't watch your Netflix movie. For us, it's emotion, mental feelings. Yeah. But still, you can't watch your Netflix movie if you don't have something that you can't see, but you know it's there. We call it Wi-Fi for the smartphones. And for people, I believe that's our spiritual part. The spiritual part, whatever you believe it is, yeah. that is there. You can't see it. But, but it, that's the hard wiring. That's the, no, that's no? The, the hard wiring is our brain, okay. like a radio. Okay. And the spiritual part is the radio waves. Ah, and the okay. brain, our hardware, receives those waves yeah. and transforms them depending on the wiring, the hard wiring, the software, yeah. into a nice movie, a love story, a, program. a, a love story, <laughs> yeah. or a horror movie. Uh, yeah. So yeah. It true. is. It is the same radio waves that in one person come out as a terrible uh, shh, and in the other one is a symphony. So the analogy just shows that we can program our mind, our bodies, and our spirit for peace. Absolutely. It's a choice, isn't it? It is a choice, and we have to work to it. Yeah. It's work yes. to achieve inner yes. peace. It doesn't and come easily. We all yes. get out of inner peace sometimes. Yeah. We all get thrown out. Yeah. When we have a sudden event happening, we get upset. Our peace is gone. Is and it? you know what? That's what friends are for. Yes. Yeah. Friends. And if you don't yeah. have friends, I have a great blog from upset <laughs> to calm and five easy steps. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this lady. She's my bestest. And uh, we, we have so many things to discuss. Mm -hmm. This is our first uh, episode of, of Building Bridges, Discovering Your Path to Peace. And we will have Christine on again, certainly more than one, two, three, four times, many more things Aww, to talk about. Thanks, Maxie. Yeah. <laughs> the best. Love you, Doc. Love you, too. So thank you very much for tuning in today we hope you enjoyed our our, our uh, episode today on peace and uh, discovering a little bit more about what was germany like from the german so now i'm canadian thank you uh, it's a nice country yes and she she's very happy to be here in, in this wonderful country yes and me too i'm canadian <laughs> so it's my husband yeah 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 and i'm a brit also by the way i can't forget about my mom i'm still from germany to say yeah but yeah germany is beautiful but of course i'm happy to live in canada and me and me as well i as well i as well so <laughs> um thank you everybody um please uh tune in for our um, upcoming episodes and whatever it is you feel you would like to see us um, partake in and exhibit, please let us know. It's really, really important uh, to me to know that. God bless. Namaste.